All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the Town of Rising Sun. Um, we're gathered here tonight to introduce a new way of not only conducting elections in the Town of Rising Sun, but a new way of actually voting and then tallying those elections. A um, couple of things I'd like to do before we get started. I'd like to introduce Mr. Dave Nichols, who will have a couple of things to say. Um, he's the technician that's going to be here the day of the election to help the election judges through the handling of the machine. Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, Pam Haynes. Those that have been in town for a long time know that normally Stephanie Andrick is the election coordinator, um, but Stephanie is currently out on maternity leave right now. They had their first child, and she's enjoying that, very excited by that. So Pam has graciously stepped in this year to fill uh, in for Stephanie. I wanted to give you a little bit of a, a background on how we got to where we are at. Um, le after last year's election, some of the election judges were talking about over the years the process of tallying the ballots was getting more and more difficult. And yes, last year probably hit the nail right on the head in the manner that the election was so close that the way we used to do it, the polls would close at 8 o'clock and then all the ballots would be collected and the uh, board members, the election judges would sit down and the way it was done last year is <clears throat> there were several people that had tablets and one person would pick up a ballot and read the names and the other people would record those names. And that concerned us a little bit because not all of the election judges actually saw each of the ballots. And in the past, it probably wasn't that big a deal because we've never had an election that was so close last year. And so when some of the candidates realized that it was in some cases two votes separating the mayor's position, and I think about nine votes separating the board of commissioners, one of those seats, the election judges prior to last year's election were stating, we need to go to electronic, this is exhausting. And let me explain to the general residents who have wondered, why could this be so difficult? Well, when the election judges get here at 7.30 in the morning, they're not allowed to leave until the, the polling is done, the votes are tallied, and everything is being con confirmed. So sometimes these ladies could be here till 7.30 in the morning till upwards of 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night tallying votes. Um, so last year when we uh, were required to do a recount, election, we figured out a way of uh, improving the integrity of the, of the ballot counting system by breaking the ballots down into packs of 25 and then handing them to each judge one at a time so they could record the vote. Well, as some of the judges will recall, there were about maybe 15 rounds of those packs of 25, and about seven times the packs had to be recounted. That just in that three, four hour period of counting the votes that way, judges' eyes were glossing over, there was a lot of stress related to it, and the judges definitely said at that point, this is too stressful. Let's step up into the modern age and get electronic voting. So. That's how we end up, ended up with electronic voting. The other thing that was done this year is the town's charter was changed to sort of freshen or bring up the code the way the election process is done. In the past, the charter actually only appointed one judge of election, although the town had been operating with three judges of elections. And then as the world around us gets more sophisticated and people sue and people challenge different things, we realize that our whole voting process had a lot of areas that could be an Achilles heel for our process going forward. So we made it that the, uh, there would be three election judges and one alternative or alternate because last year one of our judges got uh, sick about a week before the election and we really scrambled to get a fourth person uh, to fill in for that. Um, 
The other thing is poll watchers are becoming more prevalent in our elections, just like they are in other elections. And judges had issued or had expressed some frustration of what the poll watchers were doing or not doing. And there were no clear lines on what a poll watcher could do. And a poll watcher is basically someone who represents a candidate. It can represent a candidate or it can represent someone who just wants to make sure that the election process goes along smoothly and uh, they want to observe it. But in this case, we have poll watchers that are there for candidates. And poll watchers should be sort of like the fly on the wall, not involved in anything, no noise, no interactions with the residents or anything like that. And so in the past, the judges have been a little bit frustrated by some of the poll watchers answering the phone, making a lot of noise, saying, hey, Charlie, when somebody comes in the door, leaving their location. So we wanted to put a little teeth in what the election judges could could do to maintain that integrity. Because at the end of the day, this is a board of elections that conducts these elections. They're the ones that make sure there's integrity in the process. So we had to make sure that they had some rules and regulations to deal with poll watchers and other types of situations. The other thing that we changed this year, a lot of residents have complained about what I call the cattle shoot effect, in that People that were running for office would be right in the direct path of the door. And if you've gone to elections sometimes, if they're, if they're in a different location, you, if you choose to, have the ability to go away from that candidate, especially in county and state elections where there's 25 people jamming pieces of paper at you and you, you, know, you just want to scream. So a lot of residents were complaining because the elections were getting more hotly contested that they didn't like the cattle shoot. And so the town has never had <clears throat> a policy on how close you could be to the building. They've always followed the state election code that said 100 feet. <clears throat> but we have some rather unique situations here in that the bulk of our residents park in the municipal parking lot and they're forced to walk down that same cattle chute. And so what was changed this year is that candidates or supporters, they can get out there, they can advocate for their candidates, but they can't do it within 300 feet of the front door of the building. So that way people feel like they have an escape. If they just want to go and do their business and vote, they can do that. But candidates can still set up, make themselves visible, and if people want to walk over to meet, the, to meet the candidates, then they're free to do that also. So that, in a nutshell, is sort of how we got to where we are now with some of the changes um, that are in the election code. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Nichols, who's going to walk uh, the residents that are going to see this on video and the residents here in attendance exactly how the machines work. Um, one of the other problems that we had last year was we had no mechanism for provisional ballots. And as we are learning this year, some of us are getting involved in this because of the absence of Stephanie. I've never really been involved in the, the, any, any part of it. So I'm starting to see some anomalies, and I can imagine what the judges have to go through on the day of the election. We had no mechanism for provisional ballots. And so sometimes people might come in with an address that's in town, but it's not the same address that's listed on the voter registration. And they may or may not, depending upon on the judge be turned away and not able to vote. And that shouldn't happen. Under state guidelines, there's a thing called a provisional ballot that everyone has a right to cast a vote. And so they can cast a provisional ballot that initially does not get mixed in with the other ballots until after the votes are counted. And then there's a verification process that is done to verify what the dispute was on why the individual did not show up on the voter registration. And then the election judges can decide whether or not they that the qualifications have been met or were those not met. People, I think we discussed it months ago. Were those people notified? The people that were only on the, the roster for the town. Yes. Yes. That, that they would have to be registered. 
yes, yes. That, that is something we've been doing through advertisement. And that's another thing we did clarify in the charter, is that you had to be registered in, yes, we had, we had advertised that, yes. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Nichols. Are there any other questions? Yes. If that's where the provisional ballot comes into play. Yes. In other words, if, if they're living, if they're on the voter, they're on the voter registration as a town resident, but when they show you the identification, instead of living at 123 Jones Street, they're at 567 whatever street. Well, don't you normally require some type of identification? Yeah, normally in a, an election process, you would. Yeah, and I know it's because everybody, you know, you know everybody. Yeah. 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 Well, let me, let me ask you, when you vote in Cecil County elections, do they require you to show? No. Okay. No, they're making it on the computer, and that's why I think that's why we just never. Right. I mean, I've walked into the same situation. We never, right. we never did ask for right. that. Right. That's. People brought them in if there was any question. Right. But yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it makes sense to do it, but that's the beauty of this process. process. You guys are the election judges, so you guys can decide what you want to do with that. But if it were to go in that, in that direction, if you had one verification that said they lived in town, but they were providing another verification that said they lived in town but at a different address, you would just give them a provisional ballot. And then you would, you would verify that whichever way you feel comfortable at that point in doing um that's up that's up to you guys yeah at the end of the day just remember if anybody challenges it and it goes to court it yeah yeah you you my point is you're better off getting that verification because when somebody legally challenges it it's going to be the election judges that are before the judge having the answer to why they accepted something what the proof was in that so again that's something you ladies can decide on that That would be that would be the other thing you'd have to prove in the provisional. Yes, the the provisional is not. Now you watch. We'll have it happen here again. Typically, provisionals don't really come into play in an election, and so normally, you know, if you ever see final election results. They never seem to match the election results that the news put out of the newspaper because they're counting a provisional ballots and there's challenges, so the numbers can go up a little bit. So in the case of somebody gives you a driver's license and you have no idea how long they've been in town, you could give them the provisional and then over the next couple of days you can have them prove that they have been in town for 30 days. The provisionals don't have to be counted right away. And this would be my opinion. Because of the integrity of the process, if you have another close election and you've got three and four votes separating somebody and you've got a bunch of provisional ballots, there's nothing wrong with just walking out there saying we have not declared a winner yet. We have provisional ballots. 
then and then you come back the next day and you do your due diligence and find out whatever resources you need that happens sometimes in elections when they're real close you know they you know when you hear they're, they're not done counting all the ballots yet or whatever so again I, I would think as long as you guys remember that the integrity of the election process is in your hands just keep that in mind and you know you you know do what you need to do to maintain that integrity Okay. How you doing? I, uh, what I'm going to go through now is just the opening process of the uh, machine, checking out the zero count and everything else, and then I'll get back to you on the actual operation of the machine. <laughs> okay, in the front here, there's a red flashing light. We will push the red flashing light, the door will open up, and it will show you the machine number and the cartridge number. The cartridge is uh, um, like a storage for all the information. After about 30 seconds, these two numbers have to uh, match up or else the machine won't work, number one. After about 30 seconds, the tape's going to roll like it's doing now, and it shows you all the names, all three of them, and zeros next to them. All right? Now, if you missed it, it will stop and it will say all counters equal zero. This is basically what everybody should see. If you didn't see it or if you question it or whatever, when we pull the tape out at the end of the night, you can look at it. So there won't be any question at all about zeros. All right. After everybody has seen the counter equals zero, we will push the button, the tape will advance, and each person will sign their name, stating that they saw the zeros. Okay? Again, if you don't feel comfortable that you didn't see them or anything like that, you can sign it at the end of the night when we pull the tapes out, okay? <coughs> Once the last person has signed, the door will shut, and now the machine is ready to go, okay? Now, <coughs> when the voter comes in, they will come up, they will register at the desk with you. Something like that? Well, what we did was when we were doing paper ballots, we, we, we 
remainder of the ballot. Yeah, we had to have them sign the register and then we kept a list of everybody that came in and we stopped. Uh, and that, that, but we didn't, that we wouldn't be, ha I guess, I don't know, do we have to hand them something? I really, this is all new, but it probably would be a good idea. I don't know. I'll have to ponder on that. The focus of that is to make sure that they did register at the desk, okay. number one. Right. And number two, a lot of times after they do register, they'll walk around and start mingling with other people. Right. They'll talk to this person, they'll right. talk to this yeah, person. You're right. You're right. Yeah. All right. And you don't know if that person voted or not. So if they come up to you and they have a card or something like that, then you know that that person did not go to the machine and actually vote. Which is fine. Can we do that yes. with the machine? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whatever way you feel comfortable with doing. You that can way. I mean, it's easy to do it in increments of 20. Okay. That's fine. Right. We're together. That's fine. That's fine. Well, you don't have to do that with the machine. Well, well, the machine well, will keep a count. But yeah, then but you we're should. We're trying to make sure that you're trying to people count. Correct. The equal number, the same number of people. Correct. You want to make sure that that's yeah. equal. It should match up with the number on the back, the public count. In Delaware, what they do is they hold the signature card. Whoever is right. running the machine holds the signature card, and if you walk out without pushing the vote button, then the signature card goes into a pile of people that didn't vote, and you, they cancel out the machine. There, there's what you call a fleeing voter, where sometimes the voter will go in and think that they have voted and didn't, and they will walk out without casting their vote. All right. That's why it's very important for the machine operator, whoever's operating the machine, to keep a close eye on this, and I'll, I'll explain that to you later. But that's the situation with the cards. You know, it's just, just a, a good good practice. You, know, you can have red card, you, I can bring cards. I mean, it doesn't make any difference, whatever you want to do. They both, both wouldn't register if they didn't hit the vote. Correct. Correct. All right. Any questions about opening? The zero count or anything like that? Everybody? All right. Once the person reg comes in, registers at the desk, comes over with or without the card, there is a button back here, just like with the old machines. Um, the county used to use the shoot machines, the big old metal things. You always had to push what they called an office control button. That was the machine operator's control over the machine. In other words, a person cannot just come in here and just start voting, okay? The machine operator has to actually physically push a button in the back and now the machine is up as uh, ready to go, activated, ready to go, thank you, <laughs> okay? Now, you will see two red blinking lights. With your ballot, you only have one because you only have one office. This has two offices. This is just a sample ballot on here now. What these lights mean is that that is where the person, the voter, is eligible to vote. All right? So once a person comes in and makes a selection, the light in the office title goes out, stating that, that there is no more uh, options in there. Okay, and I think with yours, you have a vote for two. All right, so if they didn't vote for two, if they only selected one, that light will still start blinking until they actually push two, letting them know that that's... Did I 
have his, to vote for two? No. No. Okay. And like I said, this one has another office so they can come down and push that button. Once they made all their selections, then they will come down and push the actual green vote button. Okay. Now, that voter comes in and they go and push this button five times. Six times. And think that they voted for six times. Well, they didn't, okay? <laughs> Actually, they didn't vote at all because they did not leave a light lit, all right? So sometimes they'll go and they'll do that. They'll hit and they think, like I said, that they voted six times. The light on the door are still on, telling the machine operator if this person walks out, they did not complete their, their vote. To stop that person and get them back into the machine and finish their vote. Okay, so once they have voted, the light on the door goes off, letting everybody know that that person cast their vote. In our case, Which is fine. They can. They, they, it will count only one okay. if they only pushed one. But if they push, if it's two open positions and they push three, it will not, ac it will not accept it. It's just like, all right, this is the vote for one. I cannot select okay. another one. So it will stop. To stop. Yes. So in reality, we won't have any spoiled ballots. Correct. 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 This will not allow you to overvote. Okay? Now, I know your question is going to be, how about if they make a mistake and they didn't want to vote? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I did not want to vote for Mark. I want to vote for whoever. All they have to do is push the X next to the where they made a selection and they will deselect that person and now they can go up and select somebody else. Okay, they don't want to vote for that person, which is fine. They can deselect it, go for this one. They can do that as many times as they want up until the point of time of hitting the vote button. Okay. It's a very simple process. Uh, Again, the machine operator plays a big role in here. You know, listening for that with the light going out. If they do hear that without the light going out, it means that they did not make a selection. I, I can be. I don't, I don't know if I am or not, to be honest with you. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> Two? Two in a spare. Two in a spare, in case one gets in a flood or something. <laughs> no. Any questions about voting? Somebody's going to come out after they vote and everything worked fine. And say, yeah, I didn't want to vote for him. I'm going to change my vote. It's too late. Once they hit that vote button, they're, that's it. They're done. They made their selection. They chose to vote for that person. Now, if they come out without, put, yeah, and say, how do I change this or how do I do that, then I'm not sure what the process is. Is they get the, the judge of election or want to go in and show them, or not go in, but actually explain to them, I can explain it to them, whatever, being a non-person person, non-parson person, you know, which is fine, too. Well, I'll be here all day, so it doesn't make any difference. Any questions? It 
is. It, it's very straightforward. These machines have been around for a long you time. What about the person that has somebody to come in to help them? Can that other The machine. The behind closed, there, behind the closed that. curtains. Okay. Right, they can do whatever they want if that person chose to take that person in there. One more thing, if anybody is in a wheel wheelchair or is, um, what's the word, height challenged? That's it. <laughs> this machine can be brought down to wheelchair height. exactly what I do so that everybody can see. So all I'm going to do is break another seal, which everything should be sealed, and push a button. What it's doing now is doing all the tallying and making three copies for you. I get one copy, you get two copies. So. Okay. And what it will look like is exactly like this. Zero count that we all signed in the morning. Okay, you didn't believe me, so now you can look at it and sign it. And then you will have three different copies of the totals. All right, now once that's done, I will open up the door, and in the back, there are what I call what we call memory cards. and do a tally of both machines and give you one total. And that's how fast it will be. So the number of people voting will be four on this week that we separately? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then you will have separate tapes, one for each machine, and then I'll give you one tape added together. Right next to you. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
somebody right. and what you're mm -hmm. we're gonna have to provide you there's a form right. that if I two know that. people yeah. Yeah. If two people or two judges are the form is supposed to be filled out that said right. this is Smith needed assistance and these are the people who may help this is Smith. That would be the same form for the judges and for the or the person that came with them. Yes, it, it's the same form. You just identify who it was uh, that helped. Yeah. After we get all the selection of everything done and everything where does that go? How do we have you to lock it up? To it we, have days. To, we have to lock it up, yes. correct? Do we have yes. provisions to lock it up? Mm -hmm. I know we had the box before. I mean, yeah, we hopefully, have hopefully, hopefully you got rid of that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you get everything. Everything. Okay. Yes. What are the absentee ballots? After that's, that's done, what about the absentee ballots? You count what, them by hand. By hand. Yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. At that, after that. Now the one difference is, and we thought about this because it, it, it's probably not going to be an issue, but it used to be you had to have absentee ballots turned in by 4.30. Right. And although you wouldn't think that somebody would come to the poll with an absentee ballot in their hand, they can still deliver the absentee ballots now right up to the close of the polls. So right up to 7.59 we'll take that and just see on at first at first blush you think that well nobody if they're going to come to the poll they're going to vote the problem is once somebody requests an absentee ballot and they fill out the form they cannot come here and vote manually they have to submit the absentee ballot so that's why we're giving people an additional three and a half hours to get the courier or whoever to get the absentee ballot to Yeah, because 
we would know that they They came suppose in. they came in. They, suppose they request an absentee ballot. Decided they weren't going to use. They 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 sent it in, but then they came in and said, "Gee, I want to vote." And we have them sign the paper, so have them sign the roll or whatever. You, I don't know what you call it, but anyway, you you have them sign, and then they have vote here because we don't have any absentee ballot signature. We do that when we count the votes. Could the absentee ballots not? be open but the envelope with would their name be on the outside of the envelope no, no. Well, we there's did. no way of telling yeah there they come there's they there's they're in an envelope yeah it has their name on the outside of the envelope but inside the envelope is the absentee ballot and, and there's, there's no name there envelope. Envelope. yes and, and this is what envelope. if you recall this is what i had us do last year you guys were provided with a list of everyone who secured an absentee ballot right. and so it was we, a separate list okay. that you could cross reference correct okay yeah. so you don't have to worry about that Right. You just, everybody who comes in, take a quick look to see if they're on the absentee ballot list. Either that or you could, on, on your signature sheet or whatever you use, you could put an A next to their name yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know. Okay. You could do that. If that's a double redundancy. Yeah. Once you get the list right. in the morning, you cross right. the name out or put the A next right. to it or whatever. On the master list. Yeah. yeah. Right. That, that right. would be the easiest yeah. way. Right, right. Le you'd make least. Yeah. Less mistakes yeah. that way. Yeah. We'll provide you with the list that we have, but you guys will make the notation on right. the master on the, list. Mm -hmm. And just for the judge's reference, if somebody comes in and says, my son no longer lives with, he lives with a, don't bother writing it on the rolls because they have to request to be taken off. I tried to get my son off for three years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... Okay, I think we've got it. It'll be interesting. I, yeah. Well, and yeah, and yeah. It'll be yeah. fun. Really, it'll be fun. And yeah, those that come in and uh, complain, we just smile and say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to smile really wide. Believe everybody, me. Uh, everybody will have to let their friends know because in the past people would say, ah, don't bother going up to town hall until about 8 40 or 9 o'clock. They might come up here and everybody will be gone because <laughs> the results are. Well, be here at 8. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, right. Quarter at 8, maybe. Well, yeah. no, a little after because we have to count the absentees. Well, we'll sit on the bench after. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we could do it like the Vatican, too, with some black pups and yeah. smoke. <laughs> the, the, the county has been reached. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, you can keep right. it for a few minutes to get out there. You know what color smoke yeah. you put up. <laughs> no, just to let them know the county's oh. gone. <laughs> and the other thing, too, is that election night is still going to be an unofficial tell. Right. And it won't be official until you actually certify it. Yes. And that's done by the judge of elections. And you when's that going to be done? Huh? What day are we going to do that? You can do it decided. The next. To certify? Yeah, what? To certify? Yeah, I, I think if there's no, dis, you know, if you we don't have provisional ballots, I mean, you could, okay. you know, if you guys want to get out of here, you can come back the next day when your head's clear to certify or whatever. Talk to you guys. I have surgery. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We'll get done. Everything's going to go smoothly, and then there's going to be any orange ballots. <laughs> well, I'm the new kid on the block, so bear with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, they are too. Yeah, they're, they're new too. Oh, really? Okay. 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 Oh, okay. So we can look to yeah, you. Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> okay. I see you're right. Well, you know more than we do. <laughs> we'll get to know you real well. <laughs> Yeah, I write everything down. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have any other questions. I think we're good. All right. Now um, Pam is the election coordinator has to stand up and some closing thoughts. <laughs> See you at the polls. <laughs> <laughs>